Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is Seven Days to Die. It's Alpha 21. And I've been playing this update for a few weeks now. So what I thought I'd do is put together a selection of tips for beginners. That's people who haven't played this very much, want to know more about it, have seen it maybe, and are intrigued. It's a fantastic game. Highly recommend it. So let's get started on those beginner tips. It's also worth pointing out that some of these are going to be Alpha 21 focused because there are some key changes, but there will also be some general tips thrown in. Tip number one, and probably the most important change about Alpha 21 is how they do the experience. Books are now paramount. You have to find books. There are some really good places to do that. Obviously, the bookshop is really important, but these dispensers are fantastic. You'll find books here. And letterboxes outside houses are key. You can just go on journeys to do it to find books. I recommend it. And the reason is they help you improve the quality of the things that you craft. It's not skills that do that anymore. So you can go into your character and you can go to your profile and here if you click on the books it gives you a list of all the books that you found and these increase the quality of the things that you find and the skills that you have whereas your normal skills the ones you up with experience they just generally improve how you use things rather than the quality of them so this is really important you're going to need to collect as many books as possible to get access to the purple tier items tip two you can increase the amount and quality of items you find if you increase your skills in um, things like lucky looter here for example or treasure hunter or salvage operations you can increase the quantity and the range of things you find so you can find better things but it does take some time to get to these because you have to incre increase the attribute as well as the actual perk tip three keep an eye on the purple bar that runs along the top of the items bar your um, selection here your one to zero that purple bar at the bottom there is your experience points and it gives you an idea of how you're doing and what you're gaining experience for tip four one of the best ways to gain experience is by constructing things especially filling in things like cobbles stones and cement now you have to find the resources for that and make those but when you do and you start building structures you will find that this makes you gain experience much more quickly tip five when you're building a structure make sure you have a ledge running around it this means that it can't be climbed and it's harder for the zombies to get up if they stack try and climb over the edge okay this edge here is particularly useful now you can see that I've used cobblestones for that you can change the block size which I'll show you how to do in a sec but you can also use iron bars now these are really cool they take a bit to build but the thing about these is you can fire down through them and there's that ledge becomes much more of an effective tip six you can change the shape of a building block by by having the block appear in front of you like that on the surface and holding down R that brings up this additional menu now you can then go to shape and you're given a whole range of different types of shape that you can build and it adds a style and a look to all your structures and you can spend ages designing your own buildings but you always have to remember that each of these blocks takes up that whole volume so even if I select something like this like um, say this for example and if they click away it still takes up that whole section so if I place this here, say for example, I can't put anything into this space here. I can walk into it, but I can't put an object in this space. The whole block is still used up. It just looks different. 
Tip seven. When placing an item, you can cycle around which side or surface, what angle the block is. You can see you press the left mouse button to do this. Now that is on one axis. Now if you want to change that axis so that say it went along the top of this block, hold down the R and select the advanced. Now when you click the left, it cycles through not just the axis that we had before, but additional axes. So you can then get it to a surface that you want, say for example there, so that it sticks out. Tip eight. I like to place candles rather than torches. Torches have a large flickering light they make more noise, but they also add to your frames and slow down seven, the seventh night when, when the zombies come. So rather than using something that flickers and, and is active, and although this is maybe a bit of a legacy thing, they, I still prefer to use candles because they have less impact on the performance of the game. Tip nine. There you can see the plane will fly over every seven days. You can change the settings before you start the game and what happens is it drops a little package now the handy thing about this update is you can now see that package on the compass at the top of the screen it's a little yellow parachuted box if you like and then what you can do is jump on your vehicle of choice head along and pick it up, the supply crate there. Press R to gather all the items from the box. You can see it's got these like care packages or bundles. You open those and they then give you a range of items. That's a particularly useful one, the farm plot block, because actually that's quite a difficult item to make. Tip 10. Police cars are very cool to have around. Let's just get rid of that bone there. And then you can see you get ammo and items and parts. They're really cool. Probably one of the best sources of loot early on especially. But you will need to pick the locks. Never try and damage a police car. It will set off an alarm and you'll get some super fast zombies home in on your location and wipe you out. Just leave the police cars as they are. They will regenerate their loot every seven days or whatever setting you have it put on for your game. And they are very handy. Tip 11. When you chop down trees, you get seeds. What I like to do is build my own forests next to my bases. So any ground, soil, earth that's near you will take a tree. And you can see here, I've got a supply of wood very close at hand. My base is just over there. Tip 12. Aim at building yourself a mode of transport, preferably a motorized one. Not only do they get you around much more quickly, which is key for exploring the map. You can get out around the map to bigger cities and get those all valuable books and steel that you're trying to find as well as duct tape but they can also be accessed modified and they have a storage area where you can put stuff in so when you get head out you don't just carry the stuff in your backpack but you also carry the stuff in your vehicle storage which is very handy when tip 13 I like to organize my storage into different categories. You can see here I've got a number of boxes, storage boxes that are writable and I put the names on these particular areas, particular, particular categories or sections and then I will fill those with the items related to that title and it generally works really quickly and nicely. I can gather things together much more easily and at first glance it looks like a bit of a hassle to organize but trust me it's definitely worth it if you can organize your loot. Tip 14. 
Water is rarer in Alpha 21. It's harder to find. They've introduced these dew collectors. You can make these if you have water filters. Now, water filters are a difficult item to find. They're kind of high-end. You can buy them at traders, and the traders themselves have changed. They each have a specialization now. But if you can save up, say, 2,500 coins, then you can buy one at a trader and then set it up on a roof somewhere and then you can go in and gather water. It will collect water. It is difficult to get these together but definitely worth it and you have to keep checking them. So this is going to be one of your priorities to think about getting a dew collector built on your base. As the name suggests every seven days the horde come, the home in on you, wherever you are, okay? Don't try and defend the base where you have all your items. It's just a stupid thing to do. Potentially the base will be destroyed, all your items will be destroyed, and then you're back to square one. What you need to do is create yourself a defendable position. Now, I'm a little way on here, and this is a trap base that I've created with some traps in them and you can see when I turn it on you get all these lovely blades this works very effectively but it takes a lot of resource to get to this position so what I was doing I was going up to the top of that tower there there's a hole that looks down built myself a little platform at the top when the zombies came I had to shoot down at those zombies as they attacked now I didn't get all the loot necessarily and all the experience points that I could have got by using a trap like this but it did mean that I didn't lose all of my stuff at this base here they will not attack that base it doesn't mean anything to them if you're not there so bear that in mind it's really important to remember that tip 16 there are four different biomes in seven days to die you can see here this green this is the your more pleasant area it's got forests and hills there aren't any killer birds you've also got desert which is like the next one up which is um, a little bit more barren it's got um it's got your your killer birds and um, it, it's okay to start in. You've got yucca in there as well, which is quite handy. You've also got um, snow zones here. They've got some harder zombies in those. And you've also got some dogs in the towns. And then you've got your dead zones, which are kind of golden on here. You can't really have them as black. But these are the ones you really want to avoid. Lots of dogs, um, lots of um, birds... That will attack you uh, toxic zones they are this is the worst zone so you really when you first start out start in the green zone it's it's easier and you often find they've got big cities in these areas as well tip 17 when you enter a building one of the key things you've got to look out for is broken ceilings if you go into a location Often, they will come down from above, above. There you go, look, there's a policeman up there. And they will fall on you. Surprise you and potentially take you from behind. So always keep an eye above when you're dealing with zombies. Sometimes the tiles will indicate clearly where the zombies are going to fall down on you. Tip 18. A really useful thing that's been introduced into the game is a description of the building, a little sign about the building on the top right hand corner. You can see here this is Moe's Power Electronics. It's given me two 
red skulls, which means it's not too bad. You can have five red skulls, which would be terrible. You can also get orange skulls, which are worth half a red skull. So it's kind of like a point system, and it kind of gives you an idea about the type of creatures, type of zombies you will experience or encounter in that building. If it's a five star, there's every chance you're going to be having running zombies as well as radioactive zombies. That's assuming that you haven't set all your zombies to running in the settings, which I highly recommend that you don't do. Tip 19. Another great way of dealing with zombies is just by ducking into a building, aggroing all the zombies, leaving the building and then setting yourself up with some nice clear shots of those creatures as they come out. Often when you fire it alerts them and and this one actually has a running zombie. That's because I'm getting later in the game here. But I'm able to stand back and deal with a threat rather than having to deal with them in enclosed space, which is often a player's downfall if they get trapped in a space surrounded by zombies. But tip 20. Blocks, which are really cheap to make, are one of your best defences. What you can do is place a block down, jump on it, jump up and then place one underneath you. It's a little bit of a rhythm to it and that allows you to go straight up into different places. When you, can, when you do go to rooftops you've got to bear in mind that there may be zombies up on that roof in this case you've got to take precautions but it also allows you to escape dogs dogs are one of the biggest threats early on in game if you can get up and away from them when you do experience them then you are safe so that's a very handy way blocks are really good make sure you've got them on your bar so you can access them and then project yourself up and you can do that to great heights as well. So that is a very handy tool. Jump and place. Tip 21. You will see barrels in game. Red gasoline barrels. You can actually shoot these. And they will explode. <laughs> as you can see there taking cars and everything around them with them. Tip 22, it's a really simple one. If you make a platform, an elevated platform like this, and then create some stairs next to it, leave two spaces so you can jump up to that platform. If you do, then the zombies cannot make this jump and they will not get up. In fact, they may even come up the steps and stand there so you can shoot them. Tip 23. I like to keep my furnace away from my main base. So I put it up on a high point like this and have it accessible here. Now the reason for this is, and it may be a legacy thing this, but screamer zombies that draw other zombies are attracted to furnaces. Tip 24. With Alpha 21. Searching rubbish is even more important than it's ever been. Because, as it happens, glue and duct tape are really tricky to get your hands on in this game. So, make sure you check that. Tip 25. It's really important that you don't get thirsty or hungry. Always carry drink and food with you if you've got it. It's so important because when you do become thirsty and hungry, your stamina doesn't regain and that can be a disaster because getting away from zombies you need stamina and when you're jumping across things you need stamina and if you haven't got that then you could well be in a sticky situation. Tip 26. Make sure when night comes, you've got something to do. 
in the early game, you may well just sit there up high on a structure and try not to draw the attention of the now running zombies. But if you've got a little base, get in there and make some stuff. Go into your workbench, get some bits together, put them together, and you can come up with stuff and it, it occupies you until the day comes at which point you go out and you can loot some more tip 27 many items can be modified if you go into your inventory and go to your character um, click on the little equipment tab you can see here we have items like these scrap gloves if you take them off you've got to take them off put them in your backpack click the modify and you can see here you've got modify slots if you get modify items um, like mods basically you can put those in there and increase the properties of that particular item you can reduce the sound you can increase the storage you can increase the armor and that's just just your clothing be go to a weapon say for example this one here in the machine gun we've got four mods on here which are very handy to have indeed and for example the drum mag mod is very useful for the AK when you're firing lots of ammo tip 28 people have different combat styles although there are two main ones you can do range and you can do close combat I prefer to do ranged attack and you can see at the bottom here, I have a series of guns that I have available. Now, some people do prefer to use spears. I do keep those close at hand if I feel like I want to go in with that. And I've got a mod on here, flame mod, which also provides light and heat. But because I use range, it does mean that I can use light armor. And when by using light armor, leather armor or scrap armor, I can move more quickly which personally I find a better play style so you can see here I've got light armor you can have heavy armor and go like tank mode and use say a steel spear such as I have here which is one of the best melee weapons tip 29 when you gain a level you get experience points to spend on your character points available if you go to skills up here the little man with the um, academic hat on there it gives you your at your attributes and then your perks that go with them to gain that skill and I know this sounds like an obvious thing to say you click on the shopping trolley on the right hand side when people come in they sometimes don't realize that that is where you click okay so you click there and it spends the points and you gain that perk tip 30 seven days to die is one of the greatest survival games ever made it was one of the original steam survival games and it appeared with games like daisy back maybe 10 years ago now and it has survived that long lots of people play it still to really enjoy it as much as you can, set yourself goals. Yes, survival is key, but build a base. Discover new cities. Aim to build a bike. Tailor your character in a particular way. There are no quests, so to speak, although there are treasure maps that you can click on and and explore but it's about you coming up with ideas for your own character you can also play it multiplayer you can go onto servers as well and try and survive in worlds where there are other players but this was originally a, so a solo player game and its strength is there it is an amazing game so set yourself goals tip 30 so guys there are 30 tips for seven days to die they are beginners tips don't forget that and this is alpha 21 it's an awesome game if you enjoyed the video please click the thumbs up if you're not subbed already be great if you could there's more content coming of course and if you've got any comments please add them down below guys thanks for watching and i'll be back with you very soon thanks again